today I'm going to be talking about my slightly overly ambitious March TBR. <laughs> My TBR for March is a little outrageous because I am taking about a week long staycation where I just don't go to work and I stay at home and eat snacks and hang out in my pajamas and I'm going to be doing a lot of reading during this time because it is me time. I am going to be pretty much by myself from Monday through I think Wednesday because my boyfriend Mike has work, so I might be doing some 24-hour readathon kind of things happening, but I need some books to read during this time, and I have a really, really ambitious TBR. I really need to read a lot. I only read one book last month. If you watched my last video, you know exactly which book that was, and it was so worth it to read that book and give it the time that it deserved, but y'all, I have so many unread books in my apartment right now. I just need to get through some of this stuff. So we're back at it. The first couple of books I'm going to show I already had on my TBR for February. I'm re-adding them to my TBR for March. So I'm just going to go through them pretty quickly. I'm not really going to discuss much about them. If you want to know what these books are about, I recommend watching my last TBR video where I pretended that I was going to read these books in February, but realistically none of that happened. So first up on that list is a reread of The Naming by Alison Crogan. I already started it this morning. Today technically is March 1st, so I'm like six pages in, so I don't even count it really as starting. <laughs> but I love this book. I have reread this series a couple of times. Anytime I get in a book slump, this is one of my go-tos to get me out of it because it deals with magic, it deals with lore, it deals with romance, and it's just, it's really well written. So this is book number one. Book number two on my list is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. And this is about a girl that competes in a seamstress competition, but she has to pretend to be a boy because girls aren't allowed to do it. And she's trying to avoid a marriage. And I love that kind of shit. So on my TBR. The next book on the list was The Heart Forger. This is the second book in the Bone Witch trilogy by Rin Chupeco and I already talked about this a little bit, but basically this book is where the badass bitch goes to war and I'm here for it. So I might read this right after I finish the naming because I just keep thinking about it. Like I keep thinking like, ooh, I can read The Heart Forger. Ooh, I wonder what happens. So this is probably going to get read really early this month. The last book that is on my list for March that was from my February TBR is The City of Brass by the name that I didn't pronounce last time because I feel really bad about mispronouncing people's names and I still haven't looked it up because I am shit tier. So this is a book that deals with uh, Jeannie or Jin, however you want to say it, and basically I'm here for it. City of Magic, you know, is essentially what this feels like. So again, if you want to see any more details about what these books are about, I recommend going to my previous TBR video for February and checking that out. So on to what the rest of my list entails. This is a lot of books, you guys. I'm really hoping I can get through most of them, but I'm really excited about a bunch of these because I have been wanting to read a couple of them for a while now, and I feel like I finally am about to get this whole week of just readathon vibes. So the first book that is on my second half of my TBR is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. This is a story about a girl called Sophia from the Witchlands, and she has a specific type of magic where she can discern a truth from a lie. As you can imagine, that probably comes with some heavy political connotations because you can literally just tell when your enemies are lying to you. So it seems like this is a story of her potentially getting caught up in some political drama, but really she just kind of wants to live her own life and be free. I don't like to read too much into the synopsis of young adult stories because I feel like they just give the entire plot away every time. So I usually just read the first couple sentences and try and get an idea of what the book might be about and then I just go from there. So we'll see how I feel about this at the end of the month. The next book on my list is Blood Air. As I almost dropped it, I caught that. <laughs> I'm glad I got that on camera. Holy shit. 
Uh, again, another name that I do not want to butcher and mispronounce because it's disrespectful. So this is a take on the Anastasia... I don't want to say... It's, it's definitely not... Anastasia the real life thing that happened because that was tragic as hell. It is the Anastasia Fox retelling. <laughs> it's, it's a retelling. It's what if Anastasia lived kind of thing. But this is where Anastasia, Anna, Anya, I'm pretty sure. Nope. Anna, Anna, is being framed as the murderer of her father. Pretty fucking heavy shit, you know what I mean? So, already want it because it's Anastasia. Already love it because it's a different take than what we've seen a million times before, which is find grandmama in Paris. But also still kind of here for it. And the cover, though. Like, are you, look at her. She is here for you, okay? Like, she... I know she's being framed for the murder, but it kind of looks like she could slit your throat. I just want to be her friend. It's fine. The next book on my list I bought yesterday and it's called Red Hood, which to me, you know, I was like, Red Hood, like Red Riding Hood. And then I noticed the fur texture and I was like, bitch, this is a Red Riding Hood retelling. And then I realized who it was by. Is it, do you pronounce it Alana or Elena K. Arnold, author of Damsel. So, she already writes fairy tale retellings. So when I opened the interior and read this little red flavor text right here that says, you are alone in the woods, seen only by the unblinking yellow moon. Your hands are empty, you are nearly naked, and the wolf is angry. I was like, Red Riding Hood retelling, I'm buying it. I don't need to read anything else. Red Riding Hood retelling, literally, Here's my favorite fairy tale, y'all. Y'all have always wanted to know. It's Sleeping Beauty first and Red Riding Hood second. Beauty and the Beast, move over. I'm ready for this. I'm, you know what? I'm actually kind of hyped. I might just read this first. <laughs> I might give up on reading the naming, which I'm six pages into, and start reading this because I could probably finish this today. I'm that hype. Moving on. <laughs> the next book that I got again, purchased yesterday, is uh, called A Carne. A Carne. I don't know how to pronounce this. This is by Lynette Noni. And okay, I, there was only one copy of this on the shelf. And I like to go through and try and pick out the books that I literally have never seen anything about or heard anything about. And it, I've never seen this book before, so I slid it out and I read the inside. And what this seems like is a girl goes to school, gets swept away into a Narnia-esque realm, and ends up going to magic school there? Let me read you this, okay? Let me read you the inside of this. Dreading her first day at a new school, Alex is stunned when she walks through a doorway and finds herself stranded in Medora, a fantasy world full of impossibilities. Desperate to return home, she learns that only one man can help her, but he's missing. While waiting for him to reappear, Alex attends a Carne Academy, Medora's boarding school for teenagers with extraordinary gifts. I'm sorry, you open a door step through into fucking Hogwarts Narnia combined like I I'm ready magic school y'all okay the last book series that I read that had like magic school in it like decent magic school was actually the Keepers of the Lost City series because it actually does a great job with that so I'm hoping this does some justice to the magic school genre like also the cover just really pretty and I have literally heard nothing about this at all and I'm I'm so curious to see if this is really worth it or not and I'm gonna read it I'm gonna let you know at the end of the month the last book on my March TBR of madness <laughs> is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff so I have had some mixed feelings about reading this book because I have seen takes on both sides for and against this book 
And most of the against ones are that it's extremely graphic in its depictions of violence and that there may or may not be some sort of, un I guess, uncomfortable material that might be triggering. Um, but I, I never really saw much about the story being shit, just the descriptions being pretty yikes a -rooney. And I'm okay with that, but I don't know. So I'm going to give it a shot. I have heard some great things about this as well because, y'all, here's the thing. If you go into this book expecting young adult, you're wrong. It's not young adult. It's adult. It's got grown-up content in it. So sometimes what happens is books like this with covers like this get misshelved and then a young adult reader picks it up thinking that that's what it is and they have a bad time. So I don't know if there was some of that going on. I really am not sure. I just know that I have seen some people really, really love this and are excited about the next one. And some people like had a visceral hatred of this book. So of course I need to read it and see how I feel about it. <laughs> so, you know, on my list, let's see what happens. All in all, I just have, you know, like a modest, very limited nine books on my March TBR. Rest in peace, me. I'm actually kind of curious about how many pages this is. Let's let's do some math, shall we? <laughs> okay, I just took a look at the page count that I am attempting to read in the month of March and choked a little bit on my own spit because I gasped inwardly. Uh, 3,967. Y'all, I'm out here trying to read just under 4,000 pages in a month. Pray for me. <laughs> Rest in peace, eyeballs. I better do this in good lighting or I'm not going to have any sight left afterwards. <laughs> so yeah, that is, uh, that's what I'm attempting in March. And I wish me good luck. I wish all of you good luck on your March endeavors. I hope that this, uh, you know, is a successful journey for all of us. And at the end of this month, we'll really, we'll just see how it goes, you know? Anyway, I'm gonna go fucking read this right now. And I'm gonna have a great day because I still have like eight hours in my day off. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.